In a previous video, I took a look at how to configure Start 8 to add a Start menu to Windows 8. Now the thing about Start 8 is, compared to say Classic Shell, it's obviously much more expensive. Classic Shell is free, Start 8 is $5. So you might be asking yourself, why, considering it has actually much less in the way of configuration options, would you pay $5 for something you can more or less get for free with Classic Shell? And actually, there is a good reason to do it. Just not necessarily for the traditional Windows desktop environment. The obvious argument for getting rid of the Start menu is that it's not particularly compatible with a touch screen. Sure, you can touch the Start button, but then you have to wade through menus and click on little things with your finger that aren't necessarily all that convenient to get to. But what if instead you could have something of a hybrid of the Windows Start menu and the new Windows 8 Start screen? And in fact, that's what Start 8 allows you to do. And if you're going to pay for it, aside from a lot of simplicity in configuration, that would be the best argument I could come up with. So let's take a look real quick at the configuration options for Start 8 and see what I'm talking about. So on these style settings, the basic settings, instead of choosing the Windows 7 style, let's go with the Windows 8 style. Now you'll notice that the options now change to small, tall, wide, large, or full screen, and default to the Applications view. And once again we have the flag or start date options for what the start button is going to look like, and I'm not going to cover those here. But let's take a look at the start menu itself. So let's start with small, and we're going to leave the default option of the Applications view selected. So now you'll notice that essentially what I have in place of a Start menu is actually the Start screen. And this is the expanded view of the Start screen that shows you essentially everything that would be in your Start menu, although not quite as nicely organized because you don't have folders. But in this case the point is you don't want folders so much as you want convenience for a touch interface. So if you're using a touch screen, opening folders is probably less useful than just seeing this list of tiles representing your program shortcuts. Let's go ahead and go back here and we'll uncheck the applications view. So now what you have is the basic start screen. So if all you want to do is open basic programs that you're going to see all the time, that's what you're going to want to use. If you want to see that entire list with all the help links and perhaps helper applications, that applications view is what you're going to want to use. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. But let's look at the other options for how you can make that start screen menu appear. So here we have our tall view, a little bit more like a traditional start menu in terms of how much stuff shows up there without actually using a bunch more width. And just to show how this might be a little bit more convenient in terms of using it as a start menu replacement. So for example, maybe you have a tablet, but you're still primarily using desktop applications. If you're customizing this start screen for use with this new start menu, maybe you decide that you want to drag your application shortcuts to the beginning or left side of the start screen. So now I have convenient access to the start screen 
tiles that represent the shortcuts to those programs. And we'll go ahead and look at the other views. So here's our wide view. And a lot of what view you want to use is probably going to depend on how many things you're going to want to look at from the desktop, because keep in mind you still have your start screen, and if you're using your computer as a tablet, chances are you're spending more time there. We can even go to a full screen view, which actually switches us back to the start screen, essentially just like you would get if you didn't have the start menu installed at all. Now what's particularly convenient about this is, let's say you have a computer that you use primarily as a tablet, but maybe you ha want to have a few desktop applications available in your tablet configuration. Let's say maybe it's a hybrid, so you're using it as a tablet, but you plug it into a keyboard dock and also use it as a laptop. So now with some simple configuration, you can use your start screen style start menu, or you can quickly jump back to your Windows 7 style start menu when you plug it into your dock and use it as a laptop. So really, the big advantage to start 8, and if I were paying $5 for it, which isn't an unreasonable amount of money, except that the comparison really is to free programs, the big advantage is going to be when you want some of that tablet interface to be there, but not necessarily all of it. You don't want to be confined to the tablet interface. And in a lot of ways, I guess, I look at it as the start screen style start menu being perhaps the, the interface that it would have made sense for Microsoft to go with in order to allow both the desktop and the Metro or modern UI to be equally usable on a tablet or on a hybrid. 